How's going guys and gals and welcome to your AA meeting. Today we'll be analyzing the newest chapter of Attack on Titan 128. Real quick before diving into the chapter I'd like to break down who I am to my zero subscribers as this is my first video. So without further ado, hello my name is Gene named after some of your favorite anime characters and I've been addicted to anime for several years now. So the quick rundown of this video first we'll do a little quick satiric rundown of this latest chapter and then we'll be focusing on three analytical points that I found interesting in this particular chapter. Now, if the satirical rundown or the rundown in general is not what you're into, I'll just put a timestamp right here so we can talk about the analytical aspects that I found interesting in the chapter. So, now, let's get into the satirical rundown. Chapter 128 begins with the general and the simp, I mean Hanji, look over and discuss how their new plan will fail if the Jaegerists blow up the flying boat. Well, why haven't they blew up the flying boat already? Um, simply uh, plot armor. So, with the flying ship still at large, the group discusses a way to succeed in their mission, but again are met in the crosshair as they cannot make up their minds with their different ideology. Annie suggests fighting and killing the Jaegerists, as there is no way they'll be able to just waltz into the harbor and just fly the ship. Oh, and speaking about the airship, it can't be flown unless... I should be able to pilot the flying boat on my own, but without the... As one Biot's mechanics is nothing more than a wingless ship. Its wings are now folded so that it is easier to haul on the seas. And of course, it will take more for it to fly than simply extending those wings. My understanding that the plan was for it to be operatable only after taking it into the hangar, performing a service inspection, and conducting flight training. Great, not only does the AEG need to determine whether or not killing the Jaegers is right, but they also must figure out a way to get the mechanics to work on the ship. Hmm. I wonder who can ever come up with a plan to achieve all that. Also, they need to hurry because Aaron is not playing games anymore as he has already arrived on Marley. This pisses off the general as he goes to break Selena's arm and demands to know where Aaron is. And, well, can't you tell? He's already arrived at Marley. And Yelena handles the situation as most of us feel at this point. I don't want to die until I see what happens here okay okay after a brief torture panel we're at that moment we've all been waiting for and that's for the general to apologize and say that man bun tied in bad scene change this flock and kiyomi in a room atmosphere tense as flock continues to be a douche and gloat about having a fresh start to the world kiyomi not determined reminds flock that no matter what people will always hate one another no matter how small this world is and right before Flock proves Kiyomi's point, Armin's master plan commences. Quick rundown time. First, Armin and Connie run into the harbor and create a scene. Oh no, the bad guys are getting away. We need to get to the flying boat to stop them. Hopefully this makes the Aegirists understand that these two mean business and there is no way they're working for the enemy. No way the Aegirists already expected this, but after some simple explaining to Daz and Samuel, disconnect the explosives that were placed onto the flying boat. But Flock wasn't born yesterday, and doubts Armin, so just to be safe, he goes to kill one of Kiyomi's men, when Kiyomi goes badass and fights back. This makes things go haywire as Mikasa comes in and kicks ass right before Flock makes his grand escape and proclaims to the Jaegerists that Mikasa, Armin, and Connie are now enemies. Mikasa, Kiyomi, and her men run downstairs into the basement while the Jaegerists launch thunder spears into the building. But why run into the basement? Oh yeah. Right, the female Titan and the armor Titan are here to whoop some ass. Oh, and Samuel shoots Armin. And yeah, that kind of was important to miss, but during the Titan confusion, Connie jumps on top of Samuel and holds his gun. And just before Daz finish, finishes off Armin, Connie does what he wanted to do to Falco. And that concludes Chapter 128, Team AEG versus Jaegerist, and Armin bleeding out. Okay, now that the satiric rundown is done, let's get to some analytical parts that I found interesting about this chapter. First off, let's address the elephant in the room. What's Armin going to do now that he got shot three times? As we know, he has the colossal ability, but the last time he transformed, he kind of took down a whole entire naval fleet. So transforming next to the flying ship and most importantly Connie is a bad idea. Now, Armin is going to heal from his wounds without transforming. We've seen plenty of shifters recover from their wounds without shifting. Now, Armin looks worse for wear, but that's obviously, obviously because ECM wanted to create suspense for Chapter 129. The scene that stood out to me the most, however, 
was Armin having a flashback to Berthold. The scene in which Armin remembers is when Berthold is being confronted by his comrades while he's escaping Paradise of Aaron. Berthold, if you remember, comes to the realization that his objective was bigger than his friends he had made over the years. But because he cared so much for them, he didn't want to hurt them. But just to understand why he was doing what he was doing. And that is what I feel that Armin is seeing now. Yes, he had just been shot by Samuel, but the Aegirists already have their minds made up. And like Bear told back then, Armin can't convince any of the Aegirists his wants to stopping Aaron. Just like Bear told the new that he wouldn't be able to convince the Cadet Corps to let him run off of Aaron. Second is the one quick panel we get of Levi. As we know, other than wanting to stop Aaron, his other objective is to kill Zeke. Knowing Isayama, there's a reason why this panel was included, even though it was so short in middle school. Just Yelena stating the obvious, which no matter what happens to humanity will always have violence. Here's where a prediction for me comes to play. Like it or not, I have a feeling that Levi is going to kill Zeke, but instead of murdering Zeke, I feel like Zeke is going to self-sacrifice himself to Levi for Levi to inherit the powers of the Beast Titan. This isn't particularly a fan favorite idea, but the only reason my only reasoning for this is because of Levi's desire to kill Zeke and Zeke's want to stop Aaron's plan. Zink knows at this point that he has gone through hell and back, so there's no way that he's going to continue fighting. So here's where I feel like Zeke's going to make an appearance in chapter 129, understanding that the only way to stop Aaron is by having Levi inherit his abilities and recover from his wounds. Again, this is only an anime theory, and I might talk about this more in another video. Finally, how much is Elena letting on? Does she know Aaron's plan? She makes it clear in this chapter that if they take her with them, she'll lead them to Aaron. Which, as readers, we sure already know what Aaron's plan is and where he's going. But the way Yelena describes it in this chapter makes it seem that there's more than meets the eye. Honestly, the importance of this chapter was to show the audience that hey, no matter what happens, humanity will continue to fight one another. If Aaron succeeds, his new world will suffer under the violence and fear it did when under control by the Reese family, as shown by Flock's unique power and control he displays. Overall, I felt this chapter is one of the best ones in 2020, and yes, I know we're only three chapters in, but I really want to see Aaron's new form. And even though I'm team Aaron, I'm still curious to see what transcribed in the story. But tell me what you think in the comments. If you like the content, make sure to drop a like and subscribe, and turn on the notifications to make sure you know when the next AA meeting will take place. I also have a podcast I record with The Bearded Saiyan. We have two podcasts coming out this weekend, so go make sure to check out both his channel and the podcast out. This has been Anime Ascension, but I'll see y'all next time.